Well, good morning, and God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you one more time. <laughs> Rev Eddie here. And oh, what an exciting, glorious, wonderful day. We've got so much, so much to be excited for. Amen. Thank you, Facebook, for coming again. Thank you, YouTube, all you YouTubers out there. Good morning, and God bless you. Uh, God bless Ladera. We've been talking a little bit. God bless your heart. Amen. Watch this. There is a revival going on. Ashbury College. Kids, all excited about the Lord. There's been a revival going on at their college for over a week now. And they can't stop. Amen. Now, when revival comes in, the Spirit of God is so strong and moving, it has the power to influence a nation. Are you with me? Hello, Joe Ryan. Hello, everybody over there in the Philippines, Dipalog City, all those cities and villages surrounding Dipalog City, all the way up into the mountains. Good morning, and God bless you. But we're in revival. This is exciting, okay? And our ministry, our church, we caught this. We caught that Holy Ghost fire. And my prayer, oh, you act like I don't pray. You came up in here thinking, Rev. Eddie, don't pray. My prayer is this, is that this revival don't stop and that every church in America will catch that Holy Ghost fire and this whole nation of God's people Jesus love us. <laughs> we'll go in to revival. We need it over here so badly. And I want to add something to that prayer. Father, hear my prayer. I want this revival to be so powerful that it will reach the ears and hearts, touch their hearts, Father of all our leaders everywhere, from cities to states to Congress to Senate to this administration. Oh, Lord, let your spirit go. Just unleash him and touch their hearts, too, that this revival will be in their heart. And maybe we can turn things around in this country. Amen? But I'm not done. Oh, y'all act like I was done. I'm not done. I want these kids. And this revival that started at Ashbury College to go beyond the borders of the United States of America and to go into all the hearts of God's people all the way around this world. Hello, Australia. Catch on fiber. Catch on fire. Catch on fire, Charlotte. We got a revival that just won't stop. My pastor used to say, it's a Holy Ghost party, and a Holy Ghost party don't stop. Amen? Yeah, y'all catch this too down under. Keep that shrimp on the barbie for us. We'll be down there to collect. Amen? But catch what the Holy Spirit is doing and get that revival going in Australia. And over there in Africa, we got Pavan. Oh, now Pavan caught on fire yesterday. Amen. Let me tell you what this young man did. The Lord put, in a, put it on his heart over there in Kenya to go out and preach in the marketplace. He had 11 in attendance listening to the word of God. Ten of them. Oh, come on, Holy Ghost. Ten of them gave their lives to Christ, 
and wanted to be baptized. And he sent them to a pastor friend of her, of his, a pastor friend of his, who's got a church, and he, they are going to be baptized. <laughs> Amen. So look at how God is working. Now, I want you to check the comments below this podcast. I talked to Pavan this morning, and I asked him to write in the comments. They need Bibles. Now, they speak a lot of languages over there. Not everybody speaks English. He does. Praise God. And he has a vision in his heart to come to America one day. You come on, Pavan. <laughs> you come on to America. And he wants to preach over here, too. Amen? So he's got his English down, but there's Swahili and there's some other languages that he's ministering to over there in Kenya. Amen? And they need Bibles. So I'm going to have him come in the comments and list, you know, uh, uh, what these languages are. And if you've got some extra Bibles laying around in your garage or in a box somewhere in the pantry, you know what I'm saying? Maybe we can get those over to him. I'm also going to get him in touch with ministries that do this, you know, with the sending of Bibles because the Word of God, oh, we need that, okay? And every Christian needs to be in their Word because this Word is life-saving, life-changing, and life-rearranging. There's life. In the Word of God, there's salvation in the Word of God. There's healing. Oh, y'all act like, like I didn't say healing. Didn't I just say healing? There's healing in the Word of God. Deliverance is in the Word of God. Everything we need is in the Word of God. How to live for God. How to become one with God. We've been doing it podcast after podcast. And you know Rev Ed. All he's going to do, he is going to bring the word of God. Because that's where the power is. It's not my words that's getting you all healed. It's the word of God. It's his will that you be healed. Get in this word. Read your word. Read your word. Read your word. I keep <coughs> I keep telling you, read your word. <laughs> Can I say it one more time? Read your word. Amen? So, boy, this is an exciting time. Revival hitting the earth today. Look at what's going on in the world today. We need God to enter into these situations with his spirit. So catch on fire, say. This is an exciting day. And some of you, I know a lot of you, you're hurting, you're broken, you've got situations, you've got circumstances that you can't overcome. But I want to tell you something. As long as you don't quit with the Lord Jesus, you win. You win. Amen? Time. Time doesn't control God. Location. We're getting reports of miracles all over this nation through this ministry. We're getting reports. We're watching and talking with folks that we've been praying for. And God is moving. Distance doesn't control God. You might be thinking because we're not in the same room and I can't lay hands on you that you can't get your miracle. These things don't have anything, any restriction. They restrict us. Distance, time, space, matter. There's limitations that we find as human folk. <laughs> that time and space and matter and distance and all of these things, gravity, yeah, they do control our lives. But they don't control God. God created gravity. God created time. God created distance. Amen. So if they're all in a box, 
God's outside that box. They don't limit his word. Just believe. That's all he says. Just believe, and it shall be done. But I want all y'all, everybody under the sound of my voice, to get into this place of revival. Amen. You hear me, Pastor Nelia? She's over there with y'all in Dipalog and up in the mountains ministering, and God is truly using her. Joe, you tell Pastor Nelia, catch on fire. Catch on fire. There's a revival going on right now as we speak. And it ain't stopping. It's up on YouTube, Ashbury College. And they're doing it live right now up on YouTube. Somebody just sent that to me, and I see it's still going. People are coming from all over the world, flying in, from all over this nation, flying in. And the revival's still going. And these are kids. But I'm going to tell you something. Lord spoke it on my heart because, you know, I've been ministering with kids for years, both behind bars and in the streets. And Chaplain Howell, I told Chaplain Howell, we had that youth ministry for 14 years until I left California and got my calling to go into uh, Nevada and minister this word of God in Las Vegas. And, boy, I miss those kids. Delightful. But the Lord put it on my heart way back then. He's building an army <laughs> through these kids, this new generation. Now, you guys are looking at these kids, and you're thinking, nah, and they don't even believe in God. Oh, yes, they do. There are some on fire for the Lord, and you can witness it with your own eyes right now on YouTube. Just find Ashbury College. Them kids is on fire. Okay, on fire for the Lord. But this is an army he's raising up for these last days that will not bend, that will not break, that will not shy away, but will do the very purpose that God created them to do. He's got an army coming for these last days. Let's get with him. Let's get into this revival, a revival in our hearts. Stop focusing on the situation. Stop focusing on the loss. Stop focusing on the pains and the heartbreaks and the other conditions that we're going through. Focus on him. Watch your healing come through re revival. You think it can? Don't put no limitations on God, and there'll be no limitations in your life. Amen? <laughs> Let's go to the gospel. Y'all ready to go to the gospel? Come on. Let's let's go to Oh, y'all excited about this word, huh? Yeah, come on, children of God. Let's get in here. Uh, let me get my heavy sword. Mm-hmm. Get it off that table and into my hand and into your ears. Out of my mouth. Come on, Lord, anoint every word that comes out of my mouth. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm reading out of the New Living Translation today, and we're going to John, the Gospel of John, chapter 5. I'm going to give you all a few seconds to get there, amen. Wouldn't it just be awesome if this one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, the United States of America would catch on fire. Every church, are y'all listening to me out there? If you can't get to Kentucky, <laughs> if you can't get to Ashbury College, what you worried about distance for? Aren't you the body of Christ? Catch on fire. <coughs> <coughs> Just had some coffee. Catch on fire. Catch on fire. Let the Holy Ghost move in your congregations, and let's all go into revival. We're doing it. Y'all don't want to go into a revival? You don't want to see the Spirit of God move? Y'all don't need no miracles? Come on. Everybody, all the body of Christ, let's go into revival starting now. Amen? 
All right. You should be there now. John chapter 5. And I'm going to start at verse 1. Some of you guys are sitting out there wondering, when am I going to get my miracle? I want you to know there's no distance. God is not con uh, 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 controlled by time. You do hear me. None of these things control God. God is coming, and he's coming now into your situation. Do you believe that? That's all you got to do is believe it and watch God work. Amen? John chapter 5 starts off like this. Afterward, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days. They're going in to celebrate. Amen? <laughs> Let's celebrate in revival right now. Okay? Verse 2. Inside the city, near the sheep gate, was the pool of Bethesda. <laughs> with five covered porches, crowds of sick people, blind, lame, or paralyzed. Now, I know some of you guys out there praying for a miracle in your eyesight. Listen up. Listen up. This is for you. Okay? Some of you having trouble moving. Some of you can't move. Some of you are paralyzed, maybe not physically, but emotionally, okay? Psychologically paralyzed. You're suffering from PTSD. I'm not going out there. I don't want to go off on nobody, you know? And so that freedom to be able to go and do, you're depressed, you're anxious, can't be around people. Don't want to be around people. Kind of like being in the dark in your living room. I'm telling you, it's revival right now. You can come on out, receive this word. Amen? Crowds of sick people, blind, lame, or paralyzed, laying, lay on the porches. Crowds. Crowds of them. You ain't alone. You're not alone in your suffering. And as a matter of fact, when you look at your life and the situations in your life and what your struggles are, where your burdens are, there's somebody doing worse than you. But the Lord don't care. He's like, hey, give it all to me. I'll take this from you. Bring me your burdens, you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest in me. Give it to me. That's his will. Come on. Let's hand them things over right now and go into a revival. Amen. Verse 5. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. I was high 31 years. This man been paralyzed for 38 years. Years. <laughs> you think you're waiting on the Lord. Uh-uh. Don't worry about the time. We can start reviving in our revival in our hearts right now. Let's get excited knowing he's on his way. This man been there 38 years. But here comes the, here comes Jesus. He's coming, y'all. Can you get this in your spirit? He's coming into your situation. It's impossible for you to fix this. Nothing's impossible for God. And he's on his way right now for each and every one of us. Amen? Get that in your spirit. But start praising him. Start praying. Pray for your leaders. Pray for your country. Pray that this evil will be stopped in its tracks that's going around this world. Let's pray against these horrible agendas that they're trying to get us in bondage with and cripple us with. No. Revival, the Lord said. Revival. 
the Holy Spirit is moving. Hey, let's get in that path. Holy Ghost, get all over us. Fill us from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. Light us on that. Light us on fire, Holy Spirit. In other words, that flame jumps into your heart and hits every member of your body. Light us on fire, Holy Ghost fire. Burn out everything that's in us that can't serve God. (laughs) And just make us some praying, praising, and living machines for Jesus. Amen. Come on now. Let's keep going. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. Verse 6. When Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill for a long time, He asked him, would you like to get well? Do you want to get well out there? Because the Lord's ear is open right now through this podcast. Do you want to get well right now? Tell him. Y'all should be shouting. I don't hear nobody shouting out there. Come on and shout. Do you want it right now? Tell him. His ear is open. Amen? Oh, somebody need to get excited out there. All right. Would you like to get well? The first words out of this man's mouth. This is verse 7. Listen to him. I can't, sir. No! He don't know who's standing in front of him, does he? He don't. But his healing is standing in front of him. His salvation is standing in front of him. His resurrection (laughs) is standing in front of him. His creator is standing right there in front of him and has asked him a question. Do you want to be well? The man answered honestly, I suppose. I can't. Well, doesn't get any more honest than that, does it? But he don't know who's asking him. (laughs) Okay? The resurrection is standing in front of him. The love of God is standing in front of him. Our all-powerful God, the creator of heaven and earth, all creation, it's standing in front of him. This God of the impossible, our God of the impossible, he don't know him yet is standing in front of him with a question. Hmm. Would you like to get well? That is not a difficult question. How about us? How about you guys out there? Would you like to get well? Would you like to get delivered? Would you like the demons cast out of you? Those addictions gone, that spirit of addiction, that spirit of drug abuse, that spirit of alcohol abuse, these other demons that got us doing things we shouldn't be doing, that spirit of adultery, that lying spirit, that thieving spirit. Do you want to do you want? Would you like to get well? Now, this man answers, I can't, sir, the sick man said, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. Now, what is this pool? Let's talk about this. Amen? This pool... 
okay, would be stirred once a day. First one in that water got healed. God had made a way to heal his people by this pool. You know it's God's will that you be healed. That's what I'm trying to emphasize. He doesn't want you running around broken. Yeah, this man's been broken (laughs) for 38 years. But time doesn't mean anything to the Lord. It doesn't stop him from entering into that situation and healing it and giving back this man his life. It doesn't no matter how long you've been in your situation. I was high for 31 years, and the Lord moved. I have never even wanted it completely delivered me. No withdrawals. No, nothing. Walked away clean like I had never been high. He'll do it for you. He doesn't love me more than he loves you. Don't think that. Okay? It doesn't matter how bad you've been as to whether God's going to heal your body. You couldn't have been worse than me. I keep telling y'all, I had more sins than there are stars. And I'm not exaggerating. My sins had to have piled all the way up to heaven. But he said, my child is lost. And he displayed mercy, love, and grace like I've never known in my life. And he's healed me. He has set me free, put my feet back on planet Earth. Yeah, I was a little silly. I asked him something I shouldn't have and ended up in hell. You know my testimony, you know. <clears throat> but let's get back to this man. He's been in bondage 38 years and can't fix it himself. Isn't that just like us? We got ourselves in situations and we can't get out. We can't fix it, but God can. Come on, get them hearts on fire. Let that Holy Spirit in you and start dancing. Hey, he can do it right now. This man, he don't know. His is right now. Right now. But he don't even know Jesus. Do you know Jesus? Is your faith in Jesus? If it's not, put it in him now. Because he's a right now kind of God. And he is doing a revival here in this country through the kids. The ones that the adults have kind of, uh, I can't see God working through them. Look at him. What you can't see, you can't see your healing. (laughs) But that don't mean that God don't have one for you. Amen. He got these kids on fire. They don't even want to leave. Kids always want to leave. They always got something to do. They're not leaving that auditorium on that campus. They're in the chapel, in the chapel, packed. And half the people in there with them, they don't even know. That's how many people have come to this revival over at Ashbury College. Amen. Catch on fire, y'all. Listen to this. We're not done with this scripture. He said, I can't, sir. This is verse 7. The sick man said, For I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone always gets there ahead of me. Verse 8. And here it is. Catch this in your spirit. Jesus told him, Stand up. Pick up your mat. And walk. Instantly, the man was healed. Oh, y'all act like I didn't say that. Instantly, the man was healed. Right then, right now, suddenly, any way you want to preach it, (laughs) instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. He was completely paralyzed. 
He couldn't even drag himself over into that water. Couldn't move. Paralyzed. Now he's got his life back instantly. Now he can go back and hug his family. Somebody had to bring him out there every day. Somebody had to feed him. Somebody had to make sure he was at the pool in case today is your day. Amen. I'm telling you out there, today is your day. Right now is your time. Just give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord and go into a revival. In your spirit, in your mind, in your body, whatever you got, give it 100% to the Lord right now in revival and join these kids over there on YouTube over there at uh, Ashbury College. Let your spirit catch on fire. Pray that this nation, that every church in this nation will catch on fire. Pray that it will leave the borders of this country. Everybody fighting to get in these borders. Let the Holy Ghost outside these borders. Let it go into Mexico, up into Canada, and around this world, and let there be a world wide revival for Jesus right now. Right now. Oh, y'all act like I didn't say right now. You still standing there looking at me. What I'm supposed to do? Start praying. Start praying that these government leaders will get hit by the Holy Ghost too. Start praying that America will return to being the one nation under God that it used to be, that it was built on by our founding fathers. This word is in that Constitution. That's how they wrote it. Amen? Pray that churches all around this world will join in this uh, uh, revival. You just heard about it from me. Call your pastor. You got his number. You bug him all night long about everything else. Call him now and say, let's go into a revival. I feel it in God's spirit. Now's the time. Now's the time. Worldwide. Let's show them this one true living God. Open up your arms and start welcoming, them, welcoming people. You don't have to know them. You don't have to know what church they came from, what their beliefs are. Let's show them the power of God through his spirit in us. Catch on fire. Start preaching. Start teaching. Start singing. Start dancing. Do something. Ain't that right, Joe? <laughs> Joe Ryan over there on the radio. Uh-huh. Do something over there. Hit a button. <laughs> Hit a button. I got buttons too, Joe. Listen to my button. Yeah. Let's give a shout like the world has never heard before. Let's shout for Jesus. Let's pray to Jesus. Let's hit our knees to Jesus. Let's pray against all this evil that we're seeing in this world that the Holy Ghost will hit their hearts too, and they'll come into revival. Amen? Today, they might be your enemy, but in the twinkle of an eye, they could be your brother or sister in Christ. Let's pray, 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 pray. Let's go into a revival, folks, worldwide. Amen? So, I want to read verse 9 again. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and, be and began walking. But this miracle happened on the Sabbath. Uh-oh, here come them church folks. Here come church folk, okay? It happened on the Sabbath, so the Jewish leaders objected. That's them Sadducees, them Pharisees, those teachers of religious law that just can't catch revival in their heart. Here God is in the flesh standing before him, and they reject his teaching. They reject his miracles. They reject his work. At the same time, they reject his love. 
I love they should have known. Because here's God's love in fullness in front of them, in Jesus. And they don't know it. They reject his mercy. They reject his grace, his salvation. But you want to know what they're really doing? They're rejecting the Father that sent him. That's right. They claim to be under the law of Moses and to be children of Abraham. They claim to be children of God, but if you reject Jesus, you don't even know the Father. You can't reject Jesus and know the Father because they're one. You say you know Scripture. They did. They had teachers of religious law. Okay? This Scripture ain't going into their hearts. Pray before you read this Word. Pray that the Holy Ghost will give you his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding as you dive into this word. Okay? That you'll become one with this word, one with the Spirit of God, one with Jesus, and one with the Father. They're all one. You can't get one without getting the other. We only serve one God. He just got three different businesses going on in our lives. And we need everything we can get from God. Amen? Watch this. What did they say, these Pharisees? Sadducees. Teachers of religious law. Who just won't go into a revival. Won't let the Holy Spirit move in their lives. Have rejected the very Savior that they need. Amen? They said to the man who was cured, you can't work on the Sabbath. (laughs) Work. Is he working? That man is dancing and rejoicing and praising God. And they call it work because he's carrying a mat. Jesus told him, pick up the mat. Go home. You're done. You ain't got to be here no more. Your miracle has just arrived, and it's in me. And I'm giving it to you because I love you. And think of the crowd. There was others at that pool too. They saw that man get up. Are they rejoicing for his? Or are they coming at him? These Jewish leaders don't even see that the man just got his life back. His life just changed. He's no longer a beggar on a mat praying for a miracle. This man can go get a job now. He can go hug his family. He can provide for his family. He got his life back. Do you, they coming on him like he did something wrong. They're not celebrating that he's no longer paralyzed. Look where our hearts can get when they're not intertwined with the heart of God. Look how evil we can get. Are the the Sadducees, Pharisees, teachers of religious law, celebrating this man's deliverance? Nope. Not at all. Not at all. (laughs) They're booing. This man just changed. Freedom if it's is the yokes have been broken off of his life and he's now free in Christ. Amen? And they're booing. Why? It says you can't work on the Sabbath. The law doesn't allow you to carry that sleeping mat. You've broke one of our rules. (laughs) Silly, isn't it? Verse 11, but he replied, the man who healed me told me, pick up your mat and walk. Who said such a thing as that? They demanded. That's verse 12. Who said for you to pick up your mat? We make the rules for the Sabbath. Who is this man? Verse 13, 
The man didn't know. <laughs> For Jesus had disappeared into the crowd. Mm, 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 mm. So he couldn't even tell him who healed. Amen? Think about us. You don't have to be a Bible scholar. You need a miracle from the Lord? Hey, he gave you two of them. Tell them, Joe. You've been on yours. I'm telling you. Because I stay on mine. He gave us two knees. <laughs> Just hit your knees and say, if there is a God, I need help. Reveal yourself to me. I don't know you. But I need you. And Rev Eddie said, you love me. I believe him. I believe him. I don't know why, but I believe him. He say it like it's true. Help me, Lord. I haven't been there for you. I am a sinner. Oh, I've done so much wrong. I'm sure I don't even deserve a healing. But if you're truly almighty, all loving, all caring, and nothing's impossible for you. I need you now. Help me, Lord. It's all it takes. He don't even know who he is. And he's already running around, jumping around, breaking laws. <laughs> Carrying a mat. They call that breaking the law. This boy is dancing, rejoicing. He got his life back. Amen? Verse 14. But afterward, Jesus found him in the temple. He wasn't through with this man. He got something to tell him. He don't already ask him a question. Do you want to be healed? The man can't see healing as a possibility, but God gave it to him anyway. It don't matter what you see. I said you're healed, and he's healed. Amen? He still don't know who's talking to him. But Jesus gave him an opportunity to find out who he was. He revealed himself to this man. Watch this. Has he revealed himself in your life? All you got to do is ask him. <laughs> he ain't shy. Amen. He'll come into your life big, big and mighty. Look at him moving on these kids out there in Asbury College. Boy, they in revival. And it could be a lot of them have never, ever felt power like this before from heaven. This might be their first revival. But I guarantee you, they're going to remember this for the rest of their lives. And they're going to heaven with this revival. If this is the only revival they ever witnessed, they was there. And God's power is moving in that place. Hmm. I can't wait to hear them tell of the miracles he's doing out there in Kentucky. Amen. But watch this now. Uh, verse 14, but afterward Jesus found him in the temple and told him, you are, now you are well. This ain't a dream. It's not a hope. It's not your wish. You got this. You got it. Now you are well. Hmm. So stop sinning. I don't know what this man was doing, but God did. And the Bible doesn't say, so don't be trying to tell people that he was this and he was that. You don't know. I don't know. God knows. But God spoke to him. So stop sinning or something even worse may happen to you we were talking the other day with our young paramedic in that podcast where she came on and testified and she had brought it up some people want a miracle from God and then they run they don't stay with him I've seen that happen you know many times in ministry they come in in such desperate need. God moves on their behalf. We never see him again. 
And I've heard reports of some people, and they lost that healing, and now they're worse off than they were before. Grab a hold of Jesus and don't ever, ever let go for any reason, no matter how rough the road, no matter how intense the situation. He's already worked in your life. Uh huh. Just think back. You might be looking at the road you're on, thinking, "Oh my God, look back. What he bring, What what has he brought you through to get you where you're at?" Oh, he gonna keep on working, and he'll never quit on you. But don't you quit on him. You keep running for the Lord. Run with everything you've got, and watch him work. Never give up. Never let him go. As I tell our church, you don't quit, you win. <laughs> you don't quit, you win. And that's the gospel truth. All y'all out there, don't you quit on the Lord. You draw close, and if you don't feel like you're close, get closer. Read this word. Go to church. Embrace that uh, body of Christ. Get in with their little uh, uh, reading clubs and this, that, and the other. Become apt active in that church. Amen. Start pouring out your gifts, skills, and talents. So many want to come in the church and just take. No. You give, and you give of everything. You give of your time, your gifts, your skills, your talents. That's how you edify the body of Christ. That's how you build it up. Share those spiritual gifts. Amen? So he says, now you are well, so stop sinning, or something even worse may happen to you. Then the man went and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had healed him. Now this turns real ugly, and I don't want to go there today, so we're going to stop right here. The point of this word. Why are y'all looking at me like that? Oh, how does it get real ugly? Because Jesus gets attacked for healing somebody on the Sabbath. Okay? And I know he's looking at them like, fool, I am the Sabbath. I didn't create the Sabbath for me. I created it for you. But see, they don't want to recognize who Jesus is. This man he now knows who Jesus is, and we can stop there. Because he went back and he told them it was Jesus, and that was like a dagger in their hearts. Trust me. He done did it again, and that's what the devil does today. As we break free by the power of this anointing, as the Lord delivers us from the alcohol, and the drugs, the weed, the pills, the cocaine, the heroin, whatever, okay? As he delivers us from the depression, the anxiety, the PTSD, whatever. As he delivers us from the illnesses and sicknesses and conditions that the doctors say we have in our body, whatever it is, you see, you got an enemy, the devil and his demons that had you in bondage. And now you're set free. You thought they were glad you got delivered. You think they were glad you got healed. It was them trying to take you out. Now they even matter. We don't care. My pastor always used to say, she used to say, the devil's mad and I'm glad. Come into this freedom. Come on in. Come into this revival. There's a moving in the spirit right now that you can tap into. And these kids got it over there at Asbury College, College in Kentucky. They got this right now. And it's moving. It's been moving over a week. And they're not going to let it go. They're going to stay for the duration. And people are flying in from all over the world. Catch a hold of that. If you can't fly there, I can't fly there. I'm not going there. So as pastor of this church, we just announced we're in revival now with them. Let's carry this. 
Let's pray for our nation. Let's pray for our leaders. Let's pray for our churches. Amen? Let's pray that every church on earth catches on fire for this revival right now. Let's take this thing worldwide. Worldwide. And let the Holy Ghost have his way. Worldwide. Amen? Thank you for coming. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. And we thank you for everyone in attendance here at this podcast. Touch their hearts. Light their hearts on fire. Holy Ghost fire. That spirit of revival. Oh, hit every one of them, Lord. Let it be contagious and hit every church in America. Lord, your America. Your America, your children here that have never gotten up off our knees, no matter how this society has turned to wicked, no matter what laws they've passed, no matter what they've done, we've hung in there with you. Let this spirit, your spirit, flow from every one of your churches here in America all the way around this world that it affects our leaders. Come on, Lord. If you can save me, you can save any of them crooks up there in Washington. Ooh, did I say that? I'm sorry, Lord. Any of those people that you have allowed to be our leaders, the leaders of your believers, the leaders of your people, the leaders of your nation, touch their hearts too. Save them. Heal them. Deliver them. And set them free too. Let them know that goodness of Christ in their lives as well, Lord. And all the churches, these pastors that have been hurting your heart that we've been talking about in the last few podcasts, Lord, I want you to go to them too. You call them babies in the pulpit. You call them crooks and liars and thieves because they twisted your word. Lord, could you touch their hearts too? Can we save them too? Maybe they just lost. They brought the world into your church and you're upset at that, but what if they'll turn around right now? Can we pray for them, Lord? Pray that this spirit of revival would hit their hearts and they would come real to your throne and open up their hearts to you and repent and start preaching with power. You'd be able to anoint them, Lord and trust them with the power of God to save, heal, deliver, and set free thy people and rent, get your people into heaven. That's what it's all about. Could you hit them too, Father? Father, this prayer is going worldwide. Can you light every church up in every country with this spirit of revival right now, Lord? Oh, don't let this fire go out, Lord. Set this world on fire by your spirit. That this world may know <laughs> there is a one true living God that is all powerful and that you are God of the impossible and that they can come to you too. Oh, come on, Lord. Your will is that all be saved. Let's do it now, Lord. Yeah, let's do it now. Let's do it now, Lord. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, I pray. Amen. Y'all on fire? Go run for the Lord. Yes, go run for the Lord. Until the next time, you guys have a wonderful and blessed and glorious revival in the Lord. Amen. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.